Welcome to the Courting Happiness Podcast. This is a place where self-care becomes part of your day. A space where you'll learn evidence-based strategies to help your life, share it with those you love, and cultivate well-being at work. I'm your host, Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm a former news director, television reporter, turned happiness scholar, TEDx speaker, and transformational trainer. I also understand hardships. While working my dream job in television, I lived a nightmare of suddenly becoming a young widow after 86 days of marriage. I became committed to learning more about resilience, healing, and happiness. This is how I discovered my area research, which is positive psychology. Now I'm living my calling by training individuals and organizations on happiness and my new chapter begins with being happily engaged the courting and courting happiness is about a true courtship i like to say commitment with happiness the k in courting stands for the vulnerability of sharing my story inspirational interviews with phenomenal people the infusion of positive psychology and so much more you will learn how to commit to your well-being one episode at a time. I hope you subscribe and share. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to episode 10. We're going to talk about self-compassion. I have a question for you. What does self-compassion mean to you? I want you to think about that for a moment. What thoughts filter through your mind about self-compassion? Before I began my journey as a happiness scholar, I always looked at self-compassion as kindness to oneself. Well, one of the leading scholars in self-compassion in terms of research has not only helped me build on that definition, she inspires me and provides evidence-based strategies that are truly transformative. This incredible scholar is Dr. Christian Niff. And I often talk about her in terms of the importance of self-compassion um, in my training sessions and speaking engagements. I can't recall a time, to be very honest with you, when I don't mention Dr. Christian Niff. Dr. Niff is also the author of, this, of a book called Self-Compassion and The Proven Power of Being Kind to Yourself. I have it sitting here right next to me on the cover. I'm looking at it and it's actually um, a quote um, on the cover by Dr. Brene Brown. And she says, this is quote, a transformative read. And it truly is. Dr. Niff says this about self-compassion. And this is what I mean in terms of building on that def definition of self-compassion. Um, and I'm quoting her right now. So quote, self-compassion by definition involves the same qualities. First, it requires that we stop to recognize our own suffering. We can't be moved by our own pain if we don't even acknowledge that it exists in the first place right? It's so important that we acknowledge our pain. We talked a little bit about that in a, um, previous episodes. I think it was episode eight when we talked about the pandemic and the holiday season, right? And the Mayo Clinic gave great advice in terms of acknowledging feelings. The acknowledgement of our own feelings are so very important. Dr. Neff also talks about self-judgment. And that, you know, we all make mistakes, right? <laughs> she challenges all of us to be kinder to ourselves with the same kindness we would a friend. She also refers to self-compassion as kind of like magic. And I kind of consider it pretty magical and transformative myself. But when you think about it, and, you know, I always love to think about the value of self-compassion because I think it's so important in regards to uh, any element of our lives that we're going through, right? Especially if we're going through hardships. Um, and, and also what it means and how it can really empower us. So in episode five, uh, you met my fiance, right? Ken Lemon. And Ken talked about uh, what well, we all talked about together, right? The value of how positive psychology has helped serve us in our relationship. Now, in that interview, Ken talks about um, the inspirational wall that I created uh, in our home. And I tell you, I look at it every day. And I love looking at the different sayings, reminding me of, you know, um, different 
uh, kind of quotes that kind of lift us and inspire us. As you can tell, I kind of live by <laughs> live by quotes. I do it in the classroom every time, every lecture, I start off with the quote of the day. And I think it's great because I think quotes can really move us, right? And inspire us, but then also speak to us. So on the wall, that wall, that inspirational wall in our home, there is a beautiful saying and it's in one of my favorite colors outside of pink, and that's navy blue. And it says, kindness changes everything. Kindness changes everything. Three simple words that are truly big and powerful. Kindness changes everything. It does. So a good example would be just today. In the supermarket, I'm driving my shopping cart <laughs> over to the refrigerator section. And um, for those of you who may not know, besides just learning that my favorite color is pink and I also love navy blue, <laughs> um, I also love all things Starbucks, right? And so I was in the, uh, the supermarket and refrigerator section looking for the, what's it, Starbucks? It's like the ice co coffee, cold brew, uh, caramel macchiato, to be exact. I was looking for that in a in a refrigerator section, um, as well as some eggnog. But I was uh, I was focused on the Starbucks uh, coffee at the time, and a woman was in that section, and she was there first. And I'm, and um, and it looked like she was leaving, but she she walked back a few steps. And you know, I waited before I walked over, especially now, right, because of social distancing. She grabbed her item and she said, looked at me and said, it was kind of hard to understand her in a mask. I think she said something about like, sorry or thanks. Um, it was really hard to tell with the mask on, um, but I was smiling in my mask. <laughs> and I told her, hey, I'm smiling under this mask. Um, and I you know, told her, thank you. Um, it, you know, and, and then we ended up standing there and we talked. We ended up sharing how it's so hard to see smiles with mask on now. And I told her, yeah, I said to her, um, it's like we have to learn how to smile with our eyes now because we can't see, you know, our mouths, right, because of the mask, understandably so. And I could tell under her mask uh, while I was sharing that story that she was smiling because she was smiling with her eyes, of course, <laughs> and she saw the humor and I valued um, that she saw the humor and, um, and especially in terms of what I shared, but it was something magical that happened, that human interaction. You know, that made my day, right? Cause I'm in a supermarket alone and I'm just quickly getting a couple of things and it made my day because here we are two strangers and we're expressing kindness to each other. Just having small talk, being kind, you know, smiling with our eyes, <laughs> you know, two strangers spreading kindness. That interaction again, lifted me. And the reason is because of kindness. So imagine what kindness looks like when we do it for ourselves, right? Think about the times you were kind to yourself, right? Think about what that looks like. So Dr. Niff has an exercise in her book and it's titled, how do you react to your, yourself and your life? She mentions, how do you uh, typically react? And she has a series of questions. One question uh, says, what types of things do you typically judge? and criticize yourself for appearance, career, relationships, parenting, and she mentions and so on. So that could be any dynamic. Think about it. What types of things do you typically judge and criticize yourself for, right? What, what do they look like? She gave four elements, right? Appearance, career, relationships, parenting. Is there something else you can add to that? What are things that you have felt that you have judged and criticized yourself for. So here's the next question. What type of language do you use with yourself when you notice some flaw or, mis or mistake or make a mistake? 
Do you insult yourself? Or do you take a more kind and understanding tone? Ooh, tone is so important, isn't it? <laughs> tone is so important. So when you're talking to yourself, is it a negative tone? Or is it a positive tone or a comforting tone, right? Which is it's a positive tone, right? <laughs> what is it? What is that? I love that. What type of language do you use with yourself when you notice a flaw, mistake? And then she says, do you insult yourself? Or do you take that time in terms of talking to yourself in terms of that language? Are you kind? Do you use an understanding tone? What does it look like? Here's her next question. If you're highly critical, how does that make you feel inside, right? How does that make you feel if you're highly critical? Here's the next question. What are the consequences of being hard on yourself? Does it make you more motivated or does it tend to make you discouraged and depressed? What are the consequences the consequences of being hard on yourself? Well, that's a very powerful question, right? So think about it. if you're, you're suffering and then here you are having a conversation with yourself, what is that language? And if that language is negative, like she mentions, if you're hard on yourself, what are the consequences? So here she adds this. So what are the consequences of being so hard on yourself? Does it make you more motivated or does it tend to make you discouraged or depressed? Think about that. These are really great, insightful questions in terms of us understanding our own behavior, right? What are the consequences? So here's the next question. How do you think you would feel if you could truly accept yourself exactly as you are? Does this possibility scare you? Give you hope or both? How do you think you would feel if you could truly accept yourself exactly as you are? Does, does this possibility scare you? Does it scare you? Does it give you hope? Or do you feel a combination of both? So these questions are so beneficial because it really begins this clearer understanding as it relates to how we process, right? But then how possibly self-judgment is harming us, depending on what those results are or what you heard throughout those questions that were shared. And of course, I always recommend when you're listening to a podcast, because it's all about increasing our well-being, you know, one episode at a time, right? You know, th this is a great time to pull out your well, you know, well-being journal and start writing out some of those questions and then spending time with those answers, thinking about the language that you use. How are you talking to yourself? If you're talking to yourself negatively or harshly, what are the consequences when this happens? Are you motivated after this? How does it make you feel, right? And then how do you think you would feel if you truly accepted yourself? That's certainly a question <laughs> that we, every, all of us right, could, could possibly sit with for a moment. How do, how do you feel if you truly accept it yourself exactly as you are? Does it scare you? Does it give you hope? Or do you have a combination of both, right? Great questions to sit down with. Um, and this is a wonderful book. I highly recommend getting this book and, and spending time with these questions and getting even more insight on yourself. And so I decided just to focus on those five questions. Within her book, there's, there's, there's many more, but there's more after these questions that I just gave you out of that exercise. But these questions can tell us a lot, again, about the processing of ourselves, but how we comfort ourselves. 
So it's so important to really be able to have a clear understanding, right? Um, especially as it relate, relates to how it will help us in terms of our well-being. So here is something that is, is really <laughs> is inspirational or tweetable moment. Uh, are you ready for this inspirational quote? Uh, this is from Dr. Niff herself. So I'm going to quote her yet again. Here's another powerful quote. You can't always have high self-esteem and your life will continue to be flawed and imperfect, but self-compassion will always be there waiting for you a safe haven. It's powerful. Self-compassion being a safe haven. How true is that? This is so true. I remember the moments where when I practiced self-compassion and versus when I was hard on myself. And let me tell you, the moments where I was hard on myself, they weren't winning moments. <laughs> but the moments where I practiced self-compassion were champion moments because it's so powerful when we are kind to ourselves, when we speak kindness to ourselves, you know, and I love how she referenced that as a safe haven. How did it help me? It was a safe haven indeed. It was a safe haven. So Dr. Ness talks about being there for yourself as you would a friend, which I love. I often share this. So this is something that I share that is inspired by Dr. Niff's work. And so this is, this is from me, right? So I, I share this often and I say, you have to learn how to be your own bestie. So when, you're, when, you're, when you have a world or when you're in this world and you're serving the world and you're comforting them and whatever that world looks like, it could be your friends, your family, uh, organizations, your job, uh, could, uh, could be, uh, you know, anything that you're doing in this world, your world. So when you're serving the world and comforting the world, you have to give yourself the same love, comfort, and support that you're providing them to yourself. You have to be your own bestie, right? And it all comes back back to self, treating yourself well. And actually when you, when you do that, you treat the world even better, but it's so important that we treat ourselves well, right? So when I suffered with the loss of my late husband, it was life-changing. I had to learn that suffering, I felt like I had to learn it almost independently for some time. Yeah. Because when I, when I suffered that loss, even though I was surrounded by wonderful people that loved me, but meaning at that time in my life, I was 25 and my friends um, were just in, incredible in terms of their uh, love and support, but they couldn't relate. And I was, you know, they, they just couldn't relate to that. You know, um, at the time when I was 25, I had friends that were talking about, um, um, you know, breaking up, but, you know, we weren't at a stage of our life then where maybe the loss of a spouse was uh, so common, right? Um, and so, I, in other words, I felt like I was experiencing something that many of their parents were experiencing, um, but, but I felt that within my own age group that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have that dynamic um, and so I had to learn to be kinder to myself along the way, you know, um, you know, that's why I often tell people that there's no one size fits all to grief. It is a, it, it's a process within itself. So I would go through uh, situations and, and if I met a new person, like a new coworker or, or a new person in my life, and, and they would find out, or I would tell them I was a widow and, they would immediately say, oh, you know, what date are you going to go on? You're going to go on a date. And I'm like, oh, I'm still grieving. And but they didn't, under, they, they just didn't understand. They didn't understand. And that was okay. Because what I felt was more important than anything is, is, well, I will say 
that in itself is another, to me, it's another episode. <laughs> it's another, it's another, another conversation in terms of talking about grief and the things that uh, while you're grieving and, you know, um, and, and people may share and it may be to serve as comfort, but it just doesn't serve as comfort to you. Right. Or and you might've been there before. Right. Um, so she thought she was being comforting, but she wasn't comforting me. She wasn't comforting me at all. And that, and that comment, because I wasn't ready for that. But that's why I said this could be another episode within itself, which I'm going to take a little note on so we can talk about it later. But but what I learned that was so powerful is what I said to myself and, and the relationship I had with myself as relates to how I comforted me during that time. So this is the interesting part of the whole kind of human condition, so to speak. When hit with, you know, um, times in our lives, you know, I learned that not practicing self-compassion can just really be hurtful or harmful. So, so practicing self-compassion, as Dr. Christian Niff mentions, you know, is really is magic. So when a friend comes to you about suffering, think about it. You speak with them with love, love. You would be there for them. You would do whatever you can to comfort them. And so it's so important. It's so important that we speak to ourselves that way when we're going through levels of suffering, right? It's so important that, that, that we do that. So, we're going to end this episode <laughs> and we're going to end it with inspirational words by Dr. Niff herself. And we're going to end it with this. And I quote, I'm quoting her yet again. We don't need to be perfect to feel good about ourselves and our lives don't need to be us any certain way for us to be content. Every one of us, has the capacity for resilience, growth, and happiness simply by relating to our ever arising experience with both compassion and appreciation. I hope this inspires you to be more compassionate with yourself, to practice self-compassion. I hope this inspires you to be kinder to yourself. Those questions were really powerful, right? What language are you speaking to yourself? And I hope this podcast inspires you to learn more about Dr. Christian Niff's work in regards to self-compassion. We're going to talk more about this in future episodes, but I wanted to begin to share it, to get you to start thinking more about it, and for you also to feel a sense a belonging and empowered by it. Um, because when you really start to learn more and more about the value of self-compassion, it speaks to really the value of how kindness can truly just change everything, right? Change everything. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you practice more self-compassion today. Let's continue this conversation online. Join the Courting Happiness podcast community in Facebook. Don't forget, it's Courting with a K. Our private Facebook community is a safe haven to share, meet more people looking to build positive relationships, focus on well-being, and create a happier life. Are you ready to spread happiness? Hope you subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, coworkers, and all the important people in your world. We release a new episode every Thursday. Congratulations on your continued commitment to your courting happiness journey. We want you to be well, be happier, and of course, be kinder to yourself. We look forward to seeing you next week.